Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in this Kickstarter preview, we're going to be checking out Darkest Dungeon from Mythic Games. As you can see from the title of the video, the focus will be on the setup of what you can expect to put on your table to get ready to play a game of Darkest Dungeon. Then we're going to be moving through act number one. Now, as part of the Kickstarter, the next video following suit is going to be specifically focused on the initial parts of act number one, as well as showing you some combat and the Hamlet phase and then if you want more information on what gets cut out in between that to see the entirety of the gameplay of act number one I will have that video on my channel and you can head there to get the full picture of what act one would have for you the game is broken up into a series of acts and in this preview I'm aiming to show you how those flow and operate so without further ado let's start with the setup here beginning with the very first step before the heroes storm the darkest dungeon, they have to deal with imminent threats of Hamlet and gain strength. And there's a campaign that consists of four acts. The first three acts are going to consist of two general quests and a boss quest. And then once you defeat the boss, you'll have access to the final act where that will take place. You'll need this pad of paper right here. And again, this is subject to change in the final version, but it will keep track of your hero's information as well as your campaign information as you play. The next step of setup for your very first quest is to set up the first imminent threat. And this imminent threat is going to be threatening the hamlet as well as affecting the dungeon itself. Now there's a number of bosses that will be included inside the final production. Here with the prototype I'll be selecting this boss, the necromancer. When you select your first imminent threat, you'll ensure that it's from level number one. And you'll notice on the back side of the boss card that you can see right here, there is two different distinct pieces of information. On the top side of the card, it's going to be talking about the dungeon effects that this boss will have on the dungeon that you're exploring. And on the bottom, it has information specific to how it will affect the town. Both of these abilities are considered passive and are in play until this boss is taken out. And you won't have a chance to take down the boss until you go through act number one and number two, consisting of each different general quest. And then the third act will allow you a chance to take down the boss, which will then open up the fourth and final act at a higher difficulty. The next step of setup is all about your tokens. We want to make sure they're all organized and within easy reach. I put them in these six different containers. You can see here we have the health markers in the top left. Here we have repose tokens on the far left. We're on the right hand side, we have our what are called mark tokens in the middle. Those little ones that are either red or black are used to mark stress. We have on this far side, the green ones are the blight tokens. The red ones are the bleed tokens. We have loot or treasure tokens right here buff and debuff with buff being the blue and the gold or orangish one being the debuff we have the xp tokens as well as the stun tokens the next major step of setup is to choose four heroes from the available options to make up your party and as i'm playing solo i'll be selecting all four of them for this particular prototype the following eight are available i'm going to choose the entire bottom row here that will be the grave robber jester arbalist and highwayman and just going through each of these character boards on the left hand side you'll see the hero level listed right here the name we just went through the dodge rating as well as the hero's life and hero movement any resistances they have and immunities as well as down below the town power and on the far right hand side the death door die slot right there on this left hand side there is a space for trinkets as well on the right hand side of each of the character boards you'll find a stress track along the top as well as skill slots throughout the middle, a disease placement area and just below the quirk placement. Once you've selected your four heroes, then you'll randomly select from the remaining heroes two more, which you can see up top for me is going to be Vestal and the Bounty Hunter. And those two are going to be waiting for me at the stagecoach. And this is a location in the Hamlet that we'll talk about later on. These are characters that could potentially join our party. Next, you'll want to find the corresponding mini for each of the heroes that you have selected. 
Once all four of your heroes have been selected, you'll want to find a stress marker token for each of the character boards. Ensure it is on the white side facing up. You're gonna place this token just outside of the stress track in this position here. The next step is to find the seven level one cards for the particular character that you've chosen, and you're going to choose three of these skills to place in the level one slots on the right hand side of the board for each of the characters in play. As an example, for the Highwayman, he has seven level one cards. Point Blank Shot is one of them. Pistol Shot, Wicked Slice, Duelist Advance, Tracking Shot, Grape Shot Blast, and Open Vein. Here is a look at the opposite side of each of those skills. In more detail, you can see, for example, with Point Blank Shot, you have the name right through the middle. You have the eligible stanzas it can be used in. Highlighted above, you'll see all four different types of stanzas, and only one in this case is highlighted. You also have the range depicted by this silver or white arrow down below with a number beside it. Next to it is a red dot. That signifies the number of targets that it will affect. You have its critical right here, as well as the accuracy level you need to hit here. Target effects are mentioned down below, and there's self effects over here. As an example, I'm going to go ahead and choose three of the seven level one cards, and I'm going to choose the skills Point Blank Shot 1, Pistol Shot 1, and Wicked Slice 1. Now I'll take the three level one skills I've chosen and slot them into these three positions. For all characters and heroes selected, you'll need to find the character's stands token for each of them. And finally, each character will get two provision dice. Complete these steps for all of your heroes as part of the party, and then just ensure they're all within easy reach on the table. The party is now dispersed on the table. We have the Highwayman we just set up over here. I've also gone ahead and selected my skills for the Arbalist. The Jester's selected skills are in position. And finally, the Grave Robber's three skills are all selected. The next major step of setup is about picking the quest. At this particular point, you'll have a quest deck in the prototype here. I have six cards to choose from. I'll randomly be going right now and selecting two of them, flipping them over, and then choosing one of the two. After shuffling up the quest deck and drawing two cards, I have two of them here in front of us. Flip face up, Scout Ahead, and Dem Bones. I can choose either Either one of these it's important to read both of the cards and determine which one you want to go after based on a number of elements whether it be the flavor text whether it be objective based or gameplay mechanics based possibly even the rooms you're going to encounter there at the bottom as they're depicted in how many you will find per type we'll talk more about this later on but I'm going to go ahead in this selection and choose Scout Ahead. I think this is a really great entry level and beginning quest to go after. It tells us which room tiles we need to grab right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up all those room tiles. It's interesting to note that you are aware of every single room that will be in the dungeon you're going into. You just won't know how they're laid out. After selecting our quest, we now have to go about setting up the dungeon layout we're about to head into. And the room tiles that we just grabbed will be going onto this dungeon layout. I'm showing you all the ones included inside the prototype. There will likely be many more beyond this in the final game, but you can see every one of the dungeon layouts are different. You won't be selecting one of these, you'll be randomly choosing one, and then without knowing, you'll be taking all the room tiles from the quest card, putting those tokens face down, and on each of those door watermarked icons on this dungeon layout board. So with all the dungeon layout boards shuffled together and face down, let's go ahead and draw the top one and find out what dungeon layout we have. Here's a look at the layout of the dungeon we're about to head into. Now I'm going to grab all the room tokens. I'll place them out so you can see them all and that they match the quest we've selected. I've gone ahead and gathered all the room tokens that correspond to the quest card we selected based on how many we should have for this upcoming dungeon. So we've got two empty room tokens, we have one dark room token, we have two curo rooms, we have two layer rooms, and one trap room. Simply go ahead and mix all the room tokens together face down, and we're going to populate our dungeon layout now. 
The dungeon has been set up and now we'll go ahead and place the party marker. And to complete the setup of the dungeon, we'll now place this within easy reach as well as placing a shuffled deck of room cards next to it. The setup of the quest is complete. We have the dungeon layout done. We also have the room cards sitting right here, as well as our quest, which we selected here for reference. Just above it and just out of shot, we have everything to do with the first imminent threat that we picked up. I placed all these to the furthest side of the game board as they'll be used for reference. This, however, will be used heavily during gameplay. The next major step of setup is all about placing our heroes on the stands track. The thing to keep in mind is that the heroes we selected as well, more specifically the skills we selected for each of the characters, really does matter in terms terms of where they're going to be standing when placed on this stance track. There are four stance positions on the board. There's icons below. These are the ones that relate to the heroes. We have at the very front of the line the aggressive stance. Just behind it we have the defensive stance, then the range stance, and finally at the back the support stance. You remember from the character setup section of this video earlier, I had a character stance token placed on each of the character boards for that particular step. I've taken all of those character stance tokens off, one from each of the character boards, and that's what you're seeing in these different stance positions right now. The Grave Robber is sitting in the aggressive stance, we have the Jester in the defensive stance, Highwayman in the range stance, and the Arbalist in the support stance. Lastly, to complete the setup of the stands track, you grab the initiative deck, give it a shuffle, and place it on the board or nearby. Also, I have a white prototype marker here to track the rounds of combat when we move into them. For now, this isn't in any position. It's just on the board for reference and will be used later in gameplay. But something that does need to be set right away is that ring around the actual light level or light track inside the darkest dungeon. So as you can see I've got the ring around the five position right here and this will be changing as we go through gameplay. The next major step of setup is about the monsters and their initiative board inside the dungeon. So as we just talked about with the heroes, there are different stanzas or positions that they're in. You can see here on the monster board, those icons are exactly the same at the very top row, except they are in red. And we'll be going right now to the monster deck where we're gonna shuffle together all the monsters that are housed within this prototype. And that deck will then be placed right next to this monster board to be drawn from. Here is a look at the monster deck. It houses a number of different types of enemies. We have beasts, we have humans, we have unholy. We also have a much nastier human in here, a large human indeed. If we find the brigand blood letter, then it is going to pull this card, which will be quite some fun for our party. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and shuffle this deck together, place it face down, as I mentioned, next to the monster initiative board. Now we move on to all the remaining decks that you need to set up, that would be the Curo deck, the Town Event deck, Trinkets deck, Virtue, Affliction, Disease, and the Quirks decks. The final step to set up Darkest Dungeon is to grab all the remaining dice and make sure they're all within easy reach as you'll be using them throughout your playthrough. And that's going to wrap up this setup video for Darkest Dungeon, the board game from Mythic Games. Really looking forward to diving into this dungeon with you. Hope you'll join me in that next video as we go through the actual gameplay and how the game flows. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on rolling solo. Hello.